cymbals and hi-hats. Hi-hats in synthesized music is often just white noise and a short um, envelope, uh, which sounds great. The problem is you turn up the release, you don't get a cymbal type sound, you get a longer white noise sound, which can read as a, as a crash, but not, uh, not a ride, for example. So I'm not going to demonstrate uh, a noise hi-hat for you. Um, what I suggest you do is go to the snare drum video and check the patch out for the snare drum, which deals a lot with noise. And you can tweak that, just make it shorter and higher in pitch and you get a hi-hat. So I'm going to try and get a cymbal, which is more along the lines of an 808 sound. Here we have our initial setting. I have the filters wide open, no peak. The envelope 2, all I have is sustain on maximum and everything else is at zero. Envelope 1 is not in use in this patch. These mod controls are set at zero at the moment. Uh, the VCO mixer, VCO2 is at maximum, VCO1 is at minimum. So we're using oscillator 2, which I've set to ring. It doesn't matter where you put oscillator 1, it's not coming out through the mix. It does matter where you put the pulse width. Anywhere between about 1 o'clock and the square symbol is fine. 12 o'clock I'm going to stick it at. The scale I've got at uh, 4 foot and the scale of oscillator 2 at 2 foot. So it sounds like this. And we're going to introduce uh, feedback into FM. So sounds more complicated than it is. I'm just going to generate a signal using feedback and use that to frequency modulate the oscillators. So we come out of ESP out, the one next to the bandpass filter block here, going to in, signal in. So you can see on the peak light we've got uh, feedback going on. And then out here next to the amp symbol, into total. So now these controls here will let that uh, signal in to affect either the filters or the oscillators. And we're going to use it to affect the oscillators right now. Just to show you what that sounds like. That's without. This is with. And that's the kind of tone we're going to build our symbols from. So I'll turn the sustain down to zero now and turn the release up. Okay. Bit of decay. And we're going to filter the lows out with the high pass. And we're going to turn the peak up on the low pass. And the peak up on the high pass. And there is a cymbal sound emerging. We can develop the tone further by changing the relative pitch of the oscillators. And actually a really nice way of doing that is modulation wheel into VCO2 CV in. So now we have the modulation wheel affecting the pitch of the ring modulator, which is actually something called an exclusive OR gate. And these two oscillators are normally locked in pitch for that to the keyboard CV output, but now we've changed it using this patch lead so that the modulation wheel is now just affecting the pitch of oscillator 2 only. So lots of nice tones to be had like that. And also, I wanted to talk about just how finely you need to adjust this patch. Because if you move some of these settings even by a small amount, 
um, you get a sound which doesn't read like a cymbal at all. And I'll demonstrate that on the pitch, which is one you have to get just right. You can hear it's, a, it's not reading as a cymbal now at all. You kind of have to get the, the frequencies to clash a little bit. And along those lines, I'm going to generate some cymbals and hats uh, now from this patch uh, for the library. And you can download that library for free from the Wave Alchemy website. The link's below. You'll also find patch sheets for the cymbal and um, other drums from my other MS20 mini videos and also uh, information on synth drums which is a sample library I co-produced with Wave Alchemy created from vintage synthesizers including the Korg uh, MS20 original so check that out if you like uh, analog drum sounds uh, you can by the way also download a free 200 sound taster pack of that so it's definitely worth checking out okay thanks for watching